Click. All right, looks like I am in. All right, so live streaming on Saturday, August 17th. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. Once you get in here, let me know if you can hear me just because I'm trying a new microphone, just testing it out. Ah, so how's it going, everybody? Ah, what a beautiful day, isn't it? Not sure where you guys are from if you're watching this, but if you're in my neck of the woods and we've got through our first week of the school year, you know, how was it? You know, if you're watching this on replay, you know, drop a comment, let me know. If you're watching it live, if you're coming in, how was that first week of school for you? Let me know. And I apologize, I am not anywhere quiet. The neighbors over here seem to be doing yard work as soon as I wanted to start this. So hopefully you can hear me with the microphone here, but if not, I apologize in advance, okay. Why am I live streaming today? Well, I want to talk about today specifically. Again, I said August 17th. Why am I bringing this up? Because I was reading something really cool today. Today is the anniversary of the Battle of Gainesville. You ever heard of the Battle of Gainesville? If you're like me, you probably haven't, but that's okay. You know, that's what we're here for. We're here to learn. Battle of Gainesville, 1864. August of 1864, there was a battle in Florida. Not Olusty, and if you're from Osceola County, not Narcusi Mill, because that one's not real, okay? But the Battle of Gainesville, August. The Confederates are in town, or excuse me, the Union is in town. The Confederates, led by J.J. Dickinson, come in, sweep the Union out, okay? It's a rout. Like, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the number was three Confederate casualties compared to, I think, 38 Union dead and more than 200 captured. Okay, that's a victory, right? But man, you know, as cool as it is, and you know, it's August 17th, I wish I was in Gainesville, I just couldn't make it up there today. As cool as that is, the fact that J.J. Dickinson is involved. Now, if you don't know anything about J.J. Dickinson, he was actually born in Virginia, but, okay. He was actually born in Virginia, but he took over the 2nd Cavalry of Florida, okay? Let's backtrack. So we're in August, Battle of Gainesville. Go back to June, July and other skirmishes near Palatka. One of his sons, they capture, okay, let me back up a little bit more. They capture a group of Union uh, infantry, didn't realize that the prisoners had weapons on them. One of them pulls a gun out, shoots his son, hits him in the heart, falls off his horse. Oh, hey, Logan, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're having fun at high school. I know you can't stay. I appreciate that comment, though. Have a good year. I'll see you next time, okay? All right. So his son died. So we're you know, going back a month, July, his son is now dead, who was serving under him. But let's go back a little bit further. This is something really cool, okay? May, they're uh, up in the northeast region of Florida, not too far from St. Augustine, and the Confederates are on one side, the Union's on the other. All right, and get this. The Confederates, you know, they had their spy network, okay? So bear with me on this. Well, there's one girl, I uh, can't remember her first name, Lopez. Her father was arrested and charged as a Confederate spy, but he wasn't. But guess what? Because of this, the daughter then becomes a spy for the Confederates, you know, kind of predicting the future, if you will. And get this, she catches wind, you know, the Union that are living in her residence, that they're going to start moving supplies and take over St. Augustine. Well being a Confederate spy, she realizes how important it is to get this message out. So what does she do? She sneaks out, gets to the Confederate picket, get, takes the horse, runs in and meets with whoever's in control, who happened to be Captain J.J. Dickinson. See how this is all tying together, right? So she tells him the plan. Dickinson immediately moves. He sets up cannon, his artillery under brush that he can't see, and hides his men in the woods. And at the right moment, he gives the issue to attack. And guess what they get to do? This is one of the few instances where the Confederate cavalry is able to capture a Union gunboat. I mean, think about that. Guys on horseback are capturing a gunboat. Never happens. This is one of them. This is just south of uh, St. Augustine. This is what is called the Battle of Horse Landing. Now, come on. Don't tell me history isn't cool when I can tell you stories like this, okay? Cavalry, guys on horseback taking a warship. Now, probably not going to happen today. Obviously, different technology, different eras, right? But if you think about it, cool stuff happens, right? And I guarantee you, because I've been teaching for a long time, I guarantee you that is not in any of the history books that you are having available, you've ever had available, or probably have in the future. 
So, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? So I really wanted to jump on here because I was reading this and I was like, you know what? Not only is it the anniversary of the Battle of Gainesville, but you know, JJ Dickinson is a pretty cool man. You know, that's a pretty neat story. He actually went on to, uh, he didn't die until 1902. And when they wrote the history of the Civil War, they let him write the Florida chapter just because he spent so much time and did so much here. So interesting stories, interesting people. What do you think? Drop a comment down below, you know, hit that like button so YouTube can share this out because more people need to hear the story of JJ Dickinson, right? All right, so I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday, rest of your weekend. I'll see you Monday with my next live stream. All right, bye, guys.